this is my fourth straight video without a lounge visit. Yes, spoiled, I know. But I did enjoy visiting my next favorite terminal at Miami, besides Americans. Terminal H, where we have previously flown out with Alitalia and Air France. We got breakfast over at the Gilbert's Bakery, then took a seat in the beautiful open air atrium to have our breakfast. Who needs a lounge with a public area like this? And most lounges I visit are much busier too. We spotted this all white 777 and I was able to look at the tail number and identify it as a LATAM flight from Santiago, Chile. Have you ever flown on an aircraft without a livery? Share in the comments section below. Morning here, Billy from Gilbert Travels. We're gonna go along together on Delta Airlines today on an A321. Haven't been on Delta in several years. We're gonna head up to Grand Rapids today with a stopover in Atlanta. So right now we're gonna take down the first leg on an A321 in main cabin. Come on board with us. Excited to see what the Delta's like this day and age with the seatback screens and everything. Seems like they're running a great operation, so I'm glad to give them a shot today. Come on board with us here in a few minutes and see what it's like. As with every other A321 economy product flying, we enter a cabin today in a 3-3 configuration with 169 seats, 29 in the extra legroom comfort plus section and 140 main cabin standard seats. Unlike most A321s in American skies today, Delta has modern individual entertainment on every example in service. Today we took our seats in row 24, just in front of the mid lavatory. Also unlike other Airbus aircraft I've flown with American, United and JetBlue, this two-year-old plane has been equipped with swing-up style luggage bins. They're not as sleek as the Boeing Sky interior on the 737, but they're a major improvement to fit more bags, while keeping the cabin more open feeling and increasing headroom getting in and out of the seats. Now let's get up in the air before we have a closer look at today's seat. Good morning, welcome aboard our flight to Atlanta this morning, one hour and 24 minutes in route. We have a completely full flight, so we ask your cooperation with your carry-on items. Now that we're in the air, let's take a closer look at today's seat. The bright, modern entertainment screen is immediately apparent, and we'll look at it in depth shortly. Below that, you'll find a one-piece tray table, which for some reason has this extra-wide retention tab. Once deployed, you'll find a common spacious design with a sliding adjustment and cup indentation. Next, you'll find the large leather-lined literature pocket. I appreciated how the airline material is stowed in a dedicated inner pouch, so the rest can be used for personal items. Between each pair of seats you'll find a universal power port as well. These main cabin seats feature a tight 31 inches of seat pitch, however the slimline design does allow for decent legroom. Overhead you will find a standard set of individual air vents and reading lights. The seat does feature fully adjustable headrests. Sitting in front of the mid cabin lavatory, recline was limited and you may want to consider sitting elsewhere for a longer flight that would see more use of the facilities. But for today's short flight, it was nice to be tucked away in this private corner of the aircraft. Overall, I found this seat's design clean and modern, and it remained comfortable for all of today's short flight. So let's take a look at Delta's entertainment system, Delta Studio. Here you'll find a good selection of movies, TV series, live TV, audio features, and flight data, as well as a high detail 2D flight map. I did appreciate the full flight specs as well, but I was surprised Delta did not opt for a full 3D system. However, it's still one of the best short haul flight maps I've seen. In addition to in-flight games, a dedicated kids section is on offer with its own interface. It's a great feature for parents. I do like having a live TV option on these flights that are too short to watch a full movie. Mounted below the screen, you will find a USB as well as the headphone input. 
Almost all of Delta's fleet features Wi-Fi as well, with free access to online text messaging services like iMessage, as well as free full access to the internet for T-Mobile customers and paid access options for everyone else. Should you find yourself on a plane without a screen or a malfunctioning system, streaming entertainment is also available. I would like to have seen what flight information is available through this system, however I couldn't get that to load today. Should you prefer old-fashioned printed entertainment, Delta's literature shows you how to please instead use the electronic entertainments they've worked hard to provide for you. Okay, just kidding. But they want you to buy some food from the in-flight menu. Oh uh, well, today's route was too short to buy any onboard snacks. However, the menu is quite comprehensive. Complimentary and paid beverage options can also be found here. Taking a look at the Sky in-flight magazine, I found perhaps the densest route map I've seen, proving that all Delta's flights do, at least eventually, lead to Atlanta. A multicolored web shows off the full SkyTeam international destination possibilities. I took a look also at the terminal map for ATL, the world's longtime busiest airport. I liked how Delta features a single aircraft in detail each month, rather than an overall fleet page, this month featuring the 757, an aircraft which they fly the largest fleet in the sky. Today's flight featured Delta's shortest service type, with a single beverage offered and a choice of only two of their four available free snacks. Today, I got a Biscoff cookie and enjoyed it with my complimentary Starbucks coffee. Just like that, we were already descending into Atlanta, so enjoy today's landing and stick around for my closing thoughts. Quick walk over here to Concourse A for our next flight. So tight connection here, but uh, that was a good first flight with Delta here in a while. I like that plane, very modern, only a couple years old, and lots of uh, nice features, nice entertainment screen. Looking forward to flying a lot more with Delta here in the coming year. Come on board with us on this next flight with the uh, MD88. Come back again soon for more flight reviews here at Gilbert Travels. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be made aware when more content is available. Thanks for watching.